We're going to find out who our surprise guest is here soon enough. Chapman is our guest. Ronnie in Texas, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Thank you, sir. And I want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Chapman. I've got two ideas for you. One, uh, actually, you can think in for you, too, I think, is to help you and this program and everyone else is to keep laughing. Use humor whenever you can because, and here's the key, it helps people want to remember what you say to them. Because humor, it's, a, it's like a reward. And so sharing joy with info is, is the key. I think it helps it sink in whatever you're trying to I know, do but when the tyranny is so sick and so obvious and so ridiculous you start laughing i mean it's just sick yeah, i mean this world is just run by a bunch of scum and the public's all dumbed down but uh, you know what i shouldn't be negative and i appreciate your call ronnie the good news here bob is we're up to almost 300 sponsors to end the fed the globalists are on the run on every front they must be really getting scared they should we're formidable opponents. Oh, let's take another call here. Let's go ahead and talk to Brian in Canada. Brian, go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Bob. Hi, hey, buddy. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know up in Canada, yeah, it's the same thing. They say that the recession's over, you know, makes you wonder what kind of pills they're taking. Um, but, yeah, you should stay positive, Alex, because... Uh, if you go onto social networks like uh, 12160 and other places like that, people are well aware of what's going on, and uh, they're making up their own contingency plans. They're communicating. They're talking. We're having a big effect. Uh, Bob, I was wondering if uh, you don't think this is a mistake on their part, too. For years, we have the impression that they're under the control of everything, but that money is money, and money is normal and regular. And just recently, when they come up with their let's say, prefabricated problems, uh, they turned to us. They tried to take money from us. But when you saw them putting together the packages, you had a big resistance from the people. And so they kind of turned around and said, well, look, we're the ones who created the money anyway, so we can just create more. And this kind of tells the public, well, watch, if, if you create the money and if you can make your own money at any time to get yourself out of your own problems, Basically, you don't need us, and we don't have to put up with you anymore. It's kind of a mistake on their part. Well, I think you're absolutely right, and it's a very unusual but adroit way of explaining their problem. And it's a very sophisticated answer, and I thank you for it. I, I hadn't thought of it in those terms, but uh, they underestimate people. And there's a lot of very, very bright people throughout the entire world, and they think that they are far better than everybody else because they are in this elite group. And, of course, they know better what's good for us than we do. And when they're met with formidable force, which they have many times before, they've lost at this a number of times. And a number of players along the way have been liquidated by different societies. And many of them have been banned. In the olden days, they used to ban people for doing this. <clears throat> Although today I, I don't know where we could ban people too. But the point is that we are making a tremendous effect. We're making them react. We're telling everybody what they're doing. And in this environment where you have the layoffs and the drop in <clears throat> consumption, uh, the problems in housing, both in, in, in all of those things, all people's right. minds are open. All right, Bob, great having you on with us. I appreciate you coming on. Okay, see you next week. All right, the internationalforecaster.com. My website is infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv. His issue comes out tomorrow. Be sure and check it out. Our surprise guest coming up in just 70 seconds. Well, it's the final hour of this Friday edition. Blasting out on the and FM dial. Shortwave, XM radio, and the internet. And, uh... For the rest of the hour, we're very honored to be joined by Harrison Hagen Schmidt, or Jack Schmidt. And uh, he's an American geologist, former NASA astronaut, university professor, and a U.S. senator for one term. He is the last of the Apollo astronauts to arrive and set foot on the moon. 
and he took some of the most famous photos. The bio goes on and on. We'll talk about some of that while he's on with us. But the main reason he's on today, and, and again, we're very honored to have him, is that he has been very outspoken, thank God, against global warming being man-made. We've had a lot of climatologists and a lot of uh, you know, researchers and sunspot experts and, and all these different fields, and 37,000 of them sent letters a few months ago to the House of Representatives, and they wouldn't even let them testify. Uh, the media ignored them, and then they used a few thousand scientists on the U.N. payroll to say, we've got to totally change our way of life. Carbon dioxide's a deadly poison. It's a national security issue, and uh, astronaut... Uh, Jack Schmidt has uh, spoken out against that with his scientific training in uh, Ph.D. in geology from Harvard University and uh, all his other scientific research. And the bio goes on and on. And he reportedly took the famous photo of the marble, you know, blue marble uh, of the Earth from the moon. And so it's pretty neat to have him on. We're going to break in a few minutes, but let's go ahead and introduce him. It's great to have you on, Mr. Schmidt. It's my pleasure uh, and privilege to be with you today. I was flattered to learn that you'd actually heard of the show before. Oh, yeah. We, we try to keep track out here. <laughs> well, Mr. Schmidt, it's great to have you. Uh, let's, let's just launch into man-made global warming. I mean, they were growing grapes thousands of years ago in Britain, but they're not now. All the evidence shows it, was, it gets hotter and colder, and Mars ice caps get smaller, and then they get bigger. They're getting bigger again. Isn't it the sun, or am I wrong? Well, all the evidence is that there's a solar connection. Uh, the amplification uh, mechanism is has not been uh, uh, determined by observation as yet, but the observations that uh, scientists, uh, who you might call field scientists, the people who actually look at what nature's doing rather than trying to model it, uh, they uh, those observations... Uh, clearly indicate in my mind, and I think in uh, thousands of other minds, that the uh, the ultimate connection is with the sun. Now, how uh, small variations in solar irradiance are amplified into significant changes in ocean temperature, significant changes in atmospheric temperature, uh, global cloud cover, and the like is still, I would have to say, uh, 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 in the realm of hypotheses rather than theory. Uh, however, there's a very a good hypothesis, and that is that uh, it's the solar magnetic fields that vary with solar irradiance that are really uh, determining uh, the flux of cosmic rays into the atmosphere and therefore the amount of clouds that form. And they're forming what? The nuclei? Yeah, they form uh, when they interact with uh, molecules of oxygen and, hydro and uh, nitrogen in the uh, Earth's atmosphere, uh, you develop charged particles that uh, then uh, attract water vapor and become the nucleus for cloud formation. And when the uh, sun is relatively inactive, for example, like it is right now, uh, then the magnetic fields that protect us from cosmic rays are depressed. And you get more cosmic rays interaction with the atmosphere, more clouds, and therefore the clouds reflect more sunlight, and you end up with a cooling trend. And we've had that, as most people in, uh, in the northern hemisphere at least now realize, we've had that for almost 10 years. Uh, you may have noted that there was a recent announcement that, I guess it's Al Gore's hometown in Tennessee, has had its coldest uh, year on record so far. Yes, there's been a lot of record. But, but but not just that, then the Al Gore people have been caught faking uh, buoys and other uh, weather stations, faking h higher temperatures the last few years. Uh, our guest is also the author of Return to the Moon. He's Harrison Schmidt. We're very honored to have him. He is an astronaut. This is 